6 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. The President and the Prime Minister in their felicitation messages on the 100th Republic Day of Turkey have reaffirmed to further cement bilateral multidimensional strategic ties. The Foreign Minister has called on the international community to pressure Israel to respect the United Nations resolution and implement a ceasefire in Gaza. The martyrdom toll of Palestinians in the unabated, brutal Israeli airstrikes on Gaza has risen to over 8,000, half of which almost comprise children. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, a massive increase in human rights violations has been witnessed since the Modi-led Hindutva Indian government revoked Article 370 in August 2019. The Sikh community in Canada is voting in the second phase of the Khalistan referendum in Surrey and British Columbia today. England are chasing a victory target of 230 runs against India in the ICC Cricket World Cup 2023 match at Lucknow. And now the news in detail. The President Dr. Arif Alvi and Prime Minister Anwarul Haq Kakar have extended warmest felicitations to the brotherly people of Turkey on the 100th Republic Day of the country. In his message of felicitation, the President said outstanding friendship between Pakistan and Turkey is based on mutual understanding. He appreciated Turkey for steadfast support to Pakistan on the Kashmir issue and adoption of a bold stance against the unabated Israeli brutalities in Palestine territory, particularly the Gaza Strip. In his message, the Prime Minister reaffirmed Pakistan's abiding commitment to further cement its multidimensional strategic ties with Turkey, especially in the economic domain. He said concrete steps have been taken to further solidify economic ties with Turkey, including the signing of the Trade and Goods Agreement and the Strategic Economic Framework. The Turkish Republic, founded by the national independence hero Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, turned 100 years today. This day, 100 years ago, the great Turkish nation secured the ultimate victory by defeating foreign occupation and imperialism. Unyielding determination, courage and unity exhibited by the Turkish nation laid the foundation of Turkey's liberation, independence and national sovereignty. The Pakistan Embassy in Ankara has also felicitated the brotherly people of Turkey on the 100th Republic Day of the country. On the social media platform X, the embassy prayed that the new century may bring further progress and prosperity to the Turkish brethren. The President, Dr. Arif Alvi, has telephoned the families of the soldiers martyred in the terrorist attacks on the 16th and 18th of this month in North and South Waziristan. The President spoke to the families of Lance Naik Tabassum ul Haq, Sepoy Abdul Hamid and Sepoy Naim Akhtar and paid tribute to their valour. The President also made a telephone call to the families of Lance Naik, Waris Khan and Sepoy Sajid Azim. Pakistan has called on the international community to exert pressure on Israel to respect the United Nations resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. In a post on social media platform X today, the caretaker foreign minister Jalil Abbas Jalani said Israel has turned the lights off and cut all communications in Gaza as the death toll rises. He further stressed not to lose sight of the plight of the innocent Palestinians in the hour of darkness. As Israeli forces continued their brutal bombardment and airstrikes on the Gaza Strip, the martyrdom toll of Palestinians has risen to over 8,000, half of which is almost that of children. United Nations Human Rights Chief Walker Turk has warned of the possibly catastrophic consequences of the large-scale ground operation in the besieged enclave. 
hundreds of buildings and houses were completely destroyed and thousands damaged in the overnight strikes by the Israeli forces. Thousands of Gaza residents broke into the warehouses and distribution centers of the United Nations Palestinian Refugee Agency, grabbing flour and basic survival items. Meanwhile, the Saudi Defense Minister, Prince Khalid bin Salman, is expected to meet the top American officials tomorrow in Washington, D.C. The Ministry of Planning and Development has directed the relevant departments to accelerate the implementation of agriculture-related projects under the Special Investment Facilitation Council to ensure the timely completion. Agriculture is one of the five key targets areas under the Special Investment Facilitation Council. Some of the major projects in this regard include National Program for Improvement of Water Courses in the Country, National Program for Solarization of Agricultural Tubules, Horticulture Support Program, Disease Control in Cattle, Shrimp Farming, and Productivity Enhancement of Rice, Sugarcane, Wheat, Pulses, and Olive Cultivation, on commercial scale in the country. Repatriation of illegal foreign nationals to their countries is continuing and only two days are left for undocumented foreign nationals to voluntarily leave the country. The government has asked all the undocumented foreign nationals, including Afghans, to leave Pakistan by Tuesday. Otherwise, the law enforcement agencies will take action as per the law of the land. The Pakistan Railways has restored the train service from Sibbi to Harnai after 18 years. The Minister for Railways, Shahid Ashraf Tarder, and the caretaker chief minister, Balochistan, Mir Ali Mardan Khan Domki, jointly inaugurated the train service in Sibbi today. This is Radio Pakistan. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, a massive increase in human rights violations has been witnessed since the Modi-led regime revoked Article 370 in August 2019. Over 800 Kashmiris, including young boys and women, have been martyred, more than 2,380 injured, and over 21,000 arrested in the territory since August 2019. Political experts and analysts, while deploring the silence of the United Nations and other world major powers over the flagrant violation of international law in the occupied territory by India, have asked whether the world is awaiting eruption of another Palestine-like situation in South Asia. Meanwhile, the all parties, Zuri Conference leaders and activists languishing in the Indian jails in their messages have denounced the assertion of the Lieutenant Governor of the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir that the Huryat leaders have only two options, either to join pro-India politics or go to jail. They said New Delhi cannot change the reality of the disputed status of Jammu and Kashmir through threats and harassment. They said Kashmir dispute needs to be resolved through implementation of the United Nations resolutions. Meanwhile, the Hindutva activists des desecrated and damaged a mosque in Katwa district. The Pakistan embassy organized a seminar at The Hague to express solidarity with the oppressed people of Indian-held Kashmir. Addressing the seminar, the speakers paid rich tribute to the sacrifices of the people of Jammu and Kashmir for their inalienable right to self-determination struggle. In his address, Ambassador Mustansar Tadar while condemning the human rights violations in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, reiterated diplomatic, moral and political support to the Kashmiris for their inalienable right to self-determination. Speaking on the occasion, Kashmiri leaders Altaf Hussain Wani, Ali Raza Sayyid highlighted the sufferings of the Kashmiris, human rights violations and dem demographic changes. Voting for the second phase of the Khalistan referendum is underway in Canada. Today, more than 200,000 Sikhs are participating in the referendum. The second phase of the vote is being held at the same spot where Hardeep Singh Nijer was killed in Vancouver. The Sikh community in Canada staged a large Azad Khalistan rally against Indian Surrey or British Columbia. Members of the Sikh community, both men and women, holding Khalistan flags marched, covering a two-kilometer distance in Guru Nanak Sikh Gurdwara Sahib, where Shaheed Hardeep Singh Nijar Center was formed 
for the referendum, the participants of the rally chanted slogans Leke Rehenge Khalasa, Punjab Banega Khalistan, and Azad Khalistan. They also voiced a strong demand for justice in the case of Hardeep Singh Nijer. The participants appreciated the stance of the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who has publicly accused India of killing the Sikh leader Hardeep Singh Nijer. The Council of Khalistan President Dr. Bakshi Singh Sandhu stated that the Sikh nation is seeking from India an identical right. And now cricket. In the ICC Cricket World Cup 2023 match against India at Lucknow, England chasing a victory target of 230 runs were four runs for the loss of no wicket. In the first over a short while ago, batting first India scored 229 runs for the loss of nine wickets in the allotted 50 overs. Pakistan will play their next match against Bangladesh at Eden Gardens in Kolkata on Tuesday. And finally, the weather report. Mainly dry weather is expected in most parts of the country, while cold conditions are likely in upper parts during the next 12 hours. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk. And you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.